you may have seen headlines going around that SM is warning those who are harassing Red Velvet and leaking messages from the Listen app. I think it's called Listen. I've never actually heard the name said out loud, but basically it's SM's equivalent to Big Hit's Weavers. It's where we've gotten a bunch of updates from Wendy during her recovery, including a song cover if you miss her voice. <laughs> like me? But the reason SM is having to threaten legal action is because some people are using the paid feature where the idols can send exclusive messages and content. It's a bit more personal as you can send messages to them as well. And because of that, some people are actually paying to send messages like the ones directly to Sogi saying their subunit was too scared to come out in June, sending Irene messages basically telling her to take her clothes off. Let me reiterate, people are spending money to send this stuff and then it seems like they're so proud of it, they quote, leak it out themselves in order to brag about it. Look what I said to Irene. I guarantee you, if this person said that to Irene in real life, she will Zimzala beam them out of existence. Now, can the members see the messages? According to some reports on how the platform and especially the paid feature works, it is probably viewable to them, maybe if they choose to look at it, kind of like the way Instagram organizes DMs. Which might be why SM came out to say we have zero tolerance for that kind of stuff and will Zimzala sue you if you send any kind of inappropriate message. SM's PR team is working overtime this week week having to deal with this red velvet stuff, finally putting out their official stance to protect NCT's Taeyong. Although with that particular situation, it seems like now Dispatch is in the mix, but are actually protecting Taeyong. We've talked about how his name always gets brought up for past allegations that he's already made amends for or even proven false. But the reason it constantly keeps coming back to light is because of another party known as the informant, who continues to bring it up claiming other things like Taeyong was insincere about his apology and even accused him of lying about his volunteer duties. Well, this week, Dispatch released full details and exposed unedited cacao messages between Taeyong and his former classmate that he apologized to, and it turns out they are actually on good terms, that this informant has been putting out distorted information regarding all of this. Not only that, Dispatch even provided evidence of all of his donations and volunteer duties dating back to 2016. And you probably guessed it, SM said this informant will definitely be Zimzala sued. But with all of this good news for NCT fans, also comes the bad news. It was announced that Taeyong would not be performing at Music Bank's first half of the year special due to health issues. Keep this in mind, this is the first time ever that Taeyong has missed an official schedule. Not sure if it has anything to do with all these other things surrounding him, but if it is just health issues, hopefully it's nothing too serious and he just needs to take a step back for a bit. Unfortunately, in ATEEZ's case, Sungwa's hiatus is due Due to a sprained hip he suffered during a dance lesson. From what they're saying, it's just a mild injury, but that he does have to sit out for two weeks, and that included the KCON tact performance. What's crazy is that Hwasa was also announced to miss KCON due to a back injury she suffered during her dance practice. But in this case, not only does this affect Mamamoo's KCON performance, it now throws up a question mark for her upcoming solo comeback. It's set to come out this Monday on the 29th, but RBW says that her future schedule is now contingent on her recovery, which is definitely the right move. What they could do is release the music video and cancel the physical performances. If you remember, that's exactly what JYP in Day 6 did last month, but in their case, that was for mental health recovery. Dance practice and choreography lessons are no joke, and that includes Blackpink themselves for how you like that. Guys, it's finally happened after one year and two months, Blackpink has finally come back with a pre-release to their full album. Now, a lot of people may have noticed that the outfits for this comeback seem very different from what we usually see each of the members wearing. So much denim, denim on denim, jackets attached to pants, these amazing modernized handbooks, and apparently that's because YG stylist director of 20 years reportedly parted ways with the company back in January. For some reason, many places are calling her Blackpink pink stylist, and although she was involved with many YG artists, it might be because it seems like she was heavily involved with Blackpink, especially on her social media. I don't know. Now, the timing of this report is very interesting because a lot of fans have had a problem with Blackpink styling in the past, partly because of the specifics of their wardrobe and partly because it seemed like they were always wearing these same things. Well, there's speculation that YG wanted this to come out right before Blackpink's comeback to be like, hey guys, look, we're changing things up 
up just like you want it, but that is totally just a theory going around, and I actually have my own theory for the How You Like That music video. But before we get into that, there's a lot surrounding this music video. Good news, like a bunch of records being broken, but also at the same time, a bit of controversy as well. So while we wait for YouTube to announce those official numbers, and as I gather the critically necessary information surrounding the backlash, I'm gonna hold that stuff off for the next video and just focus on the artistic intentions of it for this one. Another thing, yes, BTS did also release a beautiful music video for their Japanese song Stay Gold, but I asked you guys on my Instagram and it seemed like because it's been so long since Blackpink has come back and I've done a few BTS theories since then, you guys wanted to see a theory for Blackpink for this one. And actually because it was so close, I might do a theory for Stay Gold in the next video anyway. There's a lot of really cool references in there, just like all the clues Blackpink gave us as their teasers were dropping. And my god did everyone speculate the covering of the eyes, mouth, and ears the four elements and how that would play a part. But I think the most important piece of information they gave us is when they said, it reminds me of a cat. The reason for that in their words is because a cat's charm is being calm. And in the beginning of the music video, that's exactly what they are, calm. But as we hear in the lyrics, underneath that tranquility is a lot of pain. They sing about sinking deeper and hitting rock bottom, while it's made to look like Jenny is drowning emotionally and physically. Ironically, it's them trying to be calm that has in turn made them actionless, complacent, and trapped within their own dark emotions. They see the light at the end of the tunnel, but have convinced themselves there's no way to get there. All of a sudden, the girls' demeanors change, almost instantly. The lyrics no longer dwell in sorrow, and this goes back to what Blackpink said right after their cat description. A cat is calm but is able to transform completely, while Jenny and Lisa teased into King Kong. They shed the blindfolds as they are no longer blind. The umbrellas that used to shroud them in darkness are now being destroyed. But were the umbrellas there protecting the girls? Or were they protecting from the girls? We see machines in the background mining the snow, unveiling the darkness underneath. See, the girl said that the message is not to be deterred by any situation, no matter how low or dark it gets. To be confident and not crumble in the face of adversity. To have the strength to stand up again and fly even higher. The Trojan horse they use represents their conviction, willingness, and determination to win no matter what, whether it be against competitors, haters, or even their own minds. The result of their decision to take action was actually shown in the beginning of the music video as a prelude, walking up to what resembles the wings of the goddess of victory as all four of them stare into the camera and ask in triumph, 